joining me on the show today. Hey, thanks for having me. So I have been a longtime follower of you. Anybody who's listening to this show knows that I followed you for a while. I recommend uh, the 10X rule all the time, so I'm honored to have you on the show, man. Uh, thank you. I appreciate you having me. So this is good timing because you've got a new book out, which is called uh, Be Obsessed or Be Average. Can you just give us the premise, the framework for the dis discussion that we're going to have well, today? You know, the, you know, I know the name of your show is Order of Man, but I want right. to talk about the disorder of man. <laughs> Let's do it. And, 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 you know, when I was in the 10th grade, my, my whole life started going downhill. I, I grew up in a middle class family, good upbringing. I don't have any of the stories like Ryan Blair's got this story about his life going to prison. Sure, sure. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't I didn't have some of the challenges and I was in middle class, had, you know, had a bike, had a car when I needed a car. And uh, I, I don't have any of those tales. And then I went down. I went from mm. in the 10th grade, my whole life started going down from the 10th grade to the time I was 25. I just I took all this potential I had and blew it. And <clears throat> it part of the reason why and I talk about it in the book is because I was basically denying society was telling me to deny who I was and to right. deny my dreams since the age of like eight I remember thinking having fantasies about being rich man when I saw the first James Bond movie I'm like I'm gonna be James Bond I'm gonna have the hot chick I want the money dude I want to be able to drink uh, that martini the way I want people serving me I I literally had these ideas uh, of being rich famous a celebrity writing books and society, as I grew between the eight of the tenth grade and particularly through college, kept telling me, "Hey, to abandon all that." Yeah. And and the more I did, the more trouble I got in. How, so, so go ahead. Keep so going. so so this book really is about it's it's my seventh book. It's my nineteenth business sales and business program, and this book is the first book that that really shares uh, my life, how I got where I'm at today. Uh, at 25, I was broke, just coming out of a treatment center for drug addiction, spiritually broke, uh, no self-esteem, hated myself. I mean, I have, been, I have been as low as a human being can go. I'm not going to get into all the darkness of it. but uh, And then at 25, man, I made a decision. Hey, I'm going to own who I am. I'm going for what I, I might, I might crash. I might die doing, sure, going for sure. this, but I'm already so low. What's at risk here? And the last 30 years has been really discovering how to, how to light my obsessions up and how to own my disorders, how to use my addictions, how, how to how to grab my compulsions and obsessiveness and turn them into the life that I have. I mean, obviously, you've been on an amazing journey. Most of us probably listening to this know where you are and what you've done. How did you make that first transition? Because I hear a lot of guys that will say, you know, I know I'm destined for something more. I know I'm supposed to do something great. I actually had a conversation with a close friend of mine about this very topic. And it's like, what do you do when you know that's what you need to do? What's the next step? Do you throw yourself all into one thing? You got, you got to go all in, all chips. You got, to, you got to tap in to the thing that everybody's going to tell you not to do. Mm, They're going to yeah. tell you not to go all in. They're going to tell you not to be. Like when I got out of a treatment center, my, my family, my mom, my sisters, my brother, everybody's worried about me. The, the guy I work for, my uncles, everybody, everybody in the city. Uh oh, is he gonna make it? Is he yeah. gonna go back to treatment? You know, and and so what I did was I just took that obsessive, compulsive, destructive behavior, and I basically took it and I threw it completely into work. Mm. And now everybody's like, "Do you just replace one addiction with another addiction?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, seems yeah. pretty simple to me." <laughs> like, like, what's the problem here, man? I'm making money for the first time. I'm saving money for the first time. I feel good about myself. Oh, my God, you've just replaced one addiction for another one. I'm like, yeah, it's working, too. And I'm right. going to stay with it. And, and um, the more if, – so I would just tell a person, if you, got, if you think you're supposed to be something, do you got to go all in on that one thing until you got that one thing hammered down, until it's repeating itself, until you feel good about yourself, and then find another thing after that to obsess with that's not destructive, what did that one thing look like for you? I mean, what were you doing when you came out of that situation? What, what was the first thing you threw yourself into? Well, dude, the, the, dude, the biggest thing I was scared of was time. Like, like, like when you've been using drugs every day for, since the age of 16 and you're 25, time is the big thing, okay? It's like, okay, if I, if I have downtime, uh, I could end up back with my buddies. Right. My, as long as I was busy, man, I was good. That idle time, right? Dude, it was the, the downtime, okay? I remember in the 10th grade being so bored in school. 
And it got worse in the 11th grade and even worse in the 12th grade and then worse in college, okay? The more I was bored and restless, I, I became like, I started looking for problems. And, and so I threw myself, I said, what can I throw myself into? And I said, well, I got a job. I had a job. The guy that I worked for took me back. And it's, it's a sales job that I hated. I said, you know what? I'm going to throw myself into the sales thing. And I did, man. I spent eight, nine hours a day on top of what I worked. I'd work eight or 10 hours a day. And then I'd throw the other six hours. I would just study sales. Mm. And, and literally in 30 days, my whole life had changed. I started liking sales for the first time. Right. Yeah. And, and, and six months later, I was the top 1% uh, of all the salespeople in the industry that I worked in. So I'm like, dude, I, I'm making some money. I'm starting to keep money. I'm staying busy. I'm getting there early. I'm staying late. I'm doing things that people say is impossible. And I'm feeling good about myself for the first time. What do you say to those who, who talk a lot about balance? I mean, this goes like right in the face of balance and it says, be obsessed, be average. Obviously you and I talked about even before we hit record the, uh, the, the, what the book cover looks like. I mean, this is larger than life. Yeah. Where does this balance come in? To the you show me, you show me one person, you show me one person, my man, this figured out how to do this balance thing. They didn't sell in a book. <laughs> yeah. Good point. Okay. You show me one guy on this planet. You show me one great person. You show me one person that me and you can trade their name with that has ever spent any time on the balance game. And then, and then, and then, and then I'll have the conversation with you. Cause I think the whole thing is a freaking, I think balance is a freaking thing that people are using to quit. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Okay? I'm good not point. interested in balance. I'm interested in, in going all in on my dreams balance ain't one of them dude i have never thought about balance i'm like if i'm playing basketball i want to be lebron if mm -hmm. it, you know if, if i'm going out to, i'm wearing a tuxedo i want to look i want to look like james bond right I, if i'm going to talk about money dude i want to be rich i want to be stupid rich i want to have the hottest chick in the room i want to have the best selling book you know i want to make a difference i want to i do work with the uh, army i want to work at the pentagon dude i just don't want to work at a base so sure. i've always had these I, I've always wanted to be an author. I've always wanted to have money. I've always wanted to be rich. I've wanted to have the yacht and the plane. L like, uh, balance? Dude, I, I don't even think about it. I'm like, damn, man. It, that, that, that wouldn't even sell as a, a cereal. A kid wouldn't even want it. <laughs> but I want to make sure I, I bring this up because what I'm hearing you say, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you're not saying only focus on one thing. You're saying that whatever you focus on, and it could be multiple things, family, business, whatever it may be, LeBron James you talk about, yeah. like be the best at whatever you're going to be dude, at, at any given moment dude, in time. Dude, being the best is going to handle the rest of the stuff. Sure. See, see, because LeBron's got the rest handled. See, he's got the nannies, and he's got the help, and he's got the friends, and he's got the offers, and he's got all these opportunities because he got to be the best at, at a handful of things. Oh, by the way, it's not just basketball because he owns his career. Right. He, he, he owns his branding and his marketing. He's decided to be the best at LeBron and, and not delegate it out, okay? He's like, these are the things I want to control. By the way, he's a control freak. So was Steve Jobs. So is Warren Buffett. So is Oprah. All the greats are control freaks. But what does society say about control? Don't try to control everything. I'm sure. like, dude, everything that's important to me, I want control over. And so I think if you get, if you just obsess about the things you love, okay, it's going to create a life that allows you to love and make sure all the things you do love get handled. Like my kids. Okay. I, I make, I make more time for my kids than I guarantee you 99% of all fathers. Mm -hmm. uh, my marriage is in the top 1% of all marriages. It, it's not perfect, but, but dude, it's, a, it's, a, I get a great, I get a 95 grade with my wife all the time. So, so um, like what's important now, now am, am, is mowing the grass important to me? No. I probably, yeah, probably not. <laughs> okay. Dogs. I love dogs. I had four dogs. I'm at a point in my life where I can't afford the dogs. They're, they're, they're just like, hey, I love them, dude. I can't have them right now. Okay. Sure. So, so I, I got to give something up. So you got to make a decision what you're willing to give up because I don't want to balance the dogs if they don't fit right now. 
Yeah, it makes a ton. It makes a ton of sense. I love it. I love it. Talk about sales. I mean, because obviously, I mean, this is a big, uh, big topic that you talk about, and I think a lot of people. I've always been in sales when it comes yeah. to business, but I think a lot of people have a misconception about sales, and that that even in some people's mind is a swear word. I want to hear about that. Dude, you ain't going anywhere. You ain't going anywhere without the say without the the fight the, the 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 sales thing. Like you're not going anywhere. I don't care who you are. You show again. Go, let's go back. Like, if you guys just make a list of people that you admire, okay? Mark Z. Dude, dude it's a sales job, folks. You got to get everybody to be on Facebook first. Sure. Warren Buffett, one of the master salespeople in the universe. So good at sales, so stealth. He is so stealth at sales that nobody even knows he's, he is a salesperson. <laughs> That's a great point. And his, his use of words and, and the way he says things is incredible. Totally. Uh, look, at, look at He's a storyteller, right? He, like, Absolutely. Like, look at Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs says, look, how would they know whether they want this phone or not? I, haven't shown the, I hadn't shown them the phone yet. Sure. Right? Now, he sold a product that was a $1,000 product during the worst economy in the history of mankind. Going mm -hmm. back to the Great Depression. So, for a product everybody already had. Exactly. Bill Gates, super salesman, okay? Super, super, super. I mean, de like, that guy will kill competition. Mm. And, and so these guys, all these guys, figured out how to sell a product, how to get the product to market. And so what, whatever, it is, whatever it is you're doing, like, if you're not going to be the sales guy, do you better understand that sales, Mark Cuban says on Shark Tank every week, what are the sales of the company? Okay, I heard the idea. Yeah, I got it. I like you. You're awesome. What are the sales of the company? Mm -hmm. well, well, Mr. Cuban, we actually haven't sold anything yet. Oh, wow. That's a problem. So, <laughs> yeah. so even if you're trying to get investors, guess what? It's a sales pitch. So I would tell everybody, look, you got to get it. If you don't like the sales word, understand this. Sales means revenue. Now, now do you not like revenue? Because you're not going anywhere without it. Right. And you should be obsessed with it. By the way, everybody should be obsessed with money. You are every day, every, anyway. You're just in denial of it because three, you live on an economic planet. You and I, no matter where we live, the color of our skin, our religion, where we grew up, every day you're reminded about what things cost and whether or not you have the money to pull the trigger on it. Mm. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense to me. Yeah, and I and we actually had this conversation uh, just just the other day about uh, money and how you, you're right about that delusion thing. I think a lot of people get so upset about money and other people are making money or the concept of sales, and they forget that they live in the same universe and they're doing the same exact thing, except they're not willing to admit it. Dude, this is an economic planet. Okay, money, you're reminded of money as often as you're reminded of gravity, yeah. or or oxygen. Okay, so so look, you, you 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 you're managing gravity and you're managing oxygen every day. Look, you need one other thing. You need money. You live on an economic planet. And Mother Teresa needed money. If Jesus was alive today, he would be like, dude, I need some Gulf Streams. I need I need some Gulf Streams. Give me. I need I need a fleet of Gulf Streams. Okay, and 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 we need a studio, and we need to disseminate. I, I need all my information translated. We need money. We need money. We got to build churches. So, sure. anybody, by the way, this is a huge topic because people have given up on money. Okay, if your audience is thirty-five to forty-five, mostly men, every day they're being pounded about the cost of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, this makes total sense to me. Absolutely. And most of us are told not to talk about money. You know, that money's a bad subject. Money's not important. Uh, a guy told me recently, he's like, man, you talk about money a lot. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. I do. You know, I found it's kind of important. You know, it's kind of important. And by the way, the oxygen thing, you, you kind of get the oxygen thing. It's available to everybody. You get it until you can't. And the gravity thing's happening either way. The, the money's an optional thing. I sure. want some money. OK, and, and anybody that's denying they don't need money. This guy told me, he's like, well, Grant, money won't make you happy. What about life balance? I'm like, bro, you ain't got any money and you don't have balance. OK, because nobody's got the balance thing figured out. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and it's like you said, I mean, you, you can't. And, and even if you have noble intentions, if you want to serve and you want to do all these things for other people. I mean, you can do that more if you have more money. You need money. Right. So right. Like, like you're a good person. Me giving you a billion dollars will not make you a worse person. Sure. It, it, it's going to, you're now going to be a good person that can actually help people because you got a billion dollars. Right. Just magnifies those efforts and who you are. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. 
Well, let's talk about some of the tenets of the book. I mean, you talk about a lot of things in here, uh, and, I, and I've gone through through the book as well, so I'm excited to uh, dive into this more. You talk about feeding the beast. What do you mean by that when the, you say feed the beast? The dark, the dark, the beast, man. The thing that, you're, the thing that nobody wants to own, okay? Whatever your little deal is. Your neurosis, you know, you're thinking of one right now, right? You got, oh my God, I do this thing, you know? Look, look, the reason you're doing that thing that's neurotic is because you're denying this obsession to be great at something. Why and do we do that? Why do we deny that? Because the energy's still there, dude. It's like, it's like holding down electricity, right? You're holding down all this power and you're denying that you want to be rich or you want to be famous. Nobody talks about that, man. Or, mm-hmm. or you want to be a best-selling author or you got this idea and the world's going to know you for it. You know, this fascination with being somebody. I think everybody's got it, got this. And, and, and when you push that down and try to deny it, dude, it's going to squirt out. It's going to squirt out. It's going to end up being a drug addiction. It's going to be some sneaky little thing you do. It's going to be some secret you got. It's going to be, I don't know, jerking off all the time. Whatever, dude. It's going to, it's going to pop out in pornography, cheating on your wife, not having a wife, whatever. Some weird little deal, dude, because the energy has to go somewhere. Mm, and, and, and the genius has to go somewhere and just tell everybody. Go, 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 just try this as an exercise. Go out on a street corner. I dare your audience to go on a street corner. And, and maybe you want to be rich. Pick, pick whatever you want. Or you want to be famous. Or you want to be a best-selling author. Or I don't know. Whatever. Go stand on a street corner and just start screaming that. I want to be rich. Dude, people, people, they'll come arrest you. Oh, sure. Yeah. So Is that why we don't share it? Is because we're just worried about what other people might think? I mean, the society to- seems to be uh, just just uh, loving the idea of average and mediocrity. And is that just a design to keep people where they should be, quote unquote, should be? No, no, it's designed. It is designed by the people that quit to make sense of why they quit. Mm. The, The average are trying to make sense of why they made a decision to just be average. Right. So your mom, your dad, teachers, your coach, I had a guy call me recently, my, go- my, my coach, my mentor I'm using, told me not to start this business. Hmm. I'm like, dude, I can't tell anybody what their goals are. I, I don't know what you're capable of. I barely know what I'm capable of, <laughs> right? So, so the last thing, my mom, my mom loved me to death. My mom's first job was to protect me, man. So my mom, every business I wanted to start, my real estate business that I wanted to start 25 years ago. I told my mom, I'm going to start buying real estate apartment buildings. She's like, oh, son, everything's going so good. Don't do that. That, that mm-hmm. business, I have bought and sold over $600 million worth of real estate starting with the first deal. That, that is my single best business today that allows me freedom. And my mom advised me against it. Why? Because she couldn't imagine doing something that big because she had given up on so many little things in life that if I did something that big, guess what? It's not that I was right. It's that she was wrong. Interesting. On all yeah. those little decisions she made. Yeah, yeah, I get this. So, okay, so let's move into the next thing then, which, which you talk about, which is starving the doubts. Because I know, like you said, I mean, people have ideas. They have thoughts, and, and, and they kind of cram those things. And then other people say, hey, you can't do this or you shouldn't do this or whatever it may be. Then how do you quit, quit, get rid of those doubts? How do you quit, eliminate quit, that you stuff? Know, you know, I grew up in Louisiana. In Louisiana, we had this grass called St. Augustine. St. Augustine is so thick that like if I drop a, ball, a golf ball in St. Augustine, I probably can't find that ball. I mean, it's so <laughs> thick. So the thing to do is to feed the beast and starve the doubt okay like like literally just fertilize the beast in many cases that will just overwhelm the doubt stay so busy man that you don't have time for doubt you know if the guys that are watching this just look man you get in trouble when you when you have too much time if you want to meet the devil take three days off he'll come find you yeah you know and so i think there's a verse in the bible about uh time about take too much time off or what, what's what's the quote in the I, Bible? I don't know. The, I I know the, the quote. I think you're referring to is um, "idle time is the devil's workshop." Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So so I say feed the beast. You know the dark side, but but just d- decide those three or four or five things that you like. Freaking, you would you would run through walls to get. Uh, feed that, and then deny all the doubts, all the doubters. 
you can't do that. It won't happen. You got to you got to literally deny that, starve it off, take the oxygen out of the room so they can't breathe. That means changing your friends, changing what you're watching, uh, what you're looking at online, probably getting rid of some of your social friends that aren't so friendly mm-hmm. to blowing up, you know, because most people don't want to blow up, dude. They, they, if you change, I mean, I know some of you got girlfriends out there. You, you, you changing is a threat to her. How so? If you say I'm going to a workshop this weekend, she's going to be like, oh my God, she don't want to go by the way. Mm-hmm. Right, right. She ain't, she ain't going to the deal because she, she does, she is not willing to do her own self-improvement. Therefore, she is threatened by anyone that does any self-improvement. Dude, you're not meant to be together. Yeah. You're, you're a Ferrari and she's a Civic. Leave her, leave, let, let her go sit in a little carport. That's where she belongs. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. No, this makes sense. How do you... So I, I think... I mean, it's easier said than done, right? I mean, No, no, no. no. It, dude, dude, it's easier said. It's, e- it's easier done than said. You, 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 uh, if you're obsessed now, if you're being tugged, okay, I was in this relationship. I was in a relationship with this chick. I loved her, man. The sex was freaking awesome. Okay. But d- 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 nothing else, man. There was nothing else that me and her had in common. She wanted the little cottage house with the two kids, the dog and the fence. And she wanted the barbecues. That's not what I wanted, man. I wanted to be a rock star, bro. I wanted to be yeah. a freaking super business guru rock star that everybody knew. I wanted to go through airports and people were like, there he is, there he is. I've always <laughs> wanted that shit, you know? See, me and you got to talk about it for a while before it's even okay for me and you to talk about it. You, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. She didn't want any of that, okay? So one day I just realized we were going, we were going to a counselor because we were having problems. Of course we're having problems. Right. You guys are on different pages. Yeah. And the counselor wanted to drug me and slow me down and wanted to give her a drug to speed her up and see if we could meet. I'm like, dude, look, she, she's a freaking civic. At the best, mm. she's in a card. I'm a freaking Ferrari, a Lambo. I'm a freaking yellow Lambo, bro. I deserve, I need to be in Miami and she needs to stay where she is, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just got the wrong chick, bro. I don't need drugs. I need to be obsessed with the things that I am. And she is just a reflection and a reminder of that. It doesn't make her wrong, but it makes her wrong for me. Sure. And it makes me wrong for her because, man, we're going to kill each other. So, so you guys got to make a decision. It's only easier said than done because you're fighting against this thing you're obsessed with. You're denying it. Yeah, that's interesting. No, that makes that makes a lot of sense to me. And so so how do you start overcoming this denial of of what it is that you really want? Is it just a matter of doing it and just feed, putting feed, it out there to the universe? Feed the beast, baby. Fertilize the, the, the freaking beast in you, the Thor, the 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 that animal in you, man. A freaking Le, LeBron, the Grant Cardone. I'll give you permission to be a freaking superstar. <laughs> Walk away from everything that's average right now, man. Make a list of everything in your life that's average. The friends, the family. You know, why, why do so many people go spend time with family they don't even like? You don't even sure. like them anymore, man. You know, look, all family is not created equal. You know, they don't have your dreams, man. It's all right. Okay. They did a good job. They were a good sister, a good cousin, a good uncle. But, but so what? They're not. Would you put them in the tank of your car? Look, you're looking for premium fuel, man. If you're a rocket ship, you need premium fuel, man. You don't need something holding you back. What are some of the things that we should be prepared for? I mean, as you were starting to take this journey, you probably ran against some things. You probably came up some things. What are those things that we can be prepared for as we're starting to do this and become obsessed with the things that we want and feeding that beast? Dude, the only thing you need to worry about is average. You guys got to worry about it. It, it is the, it is the, it is the. It's terrorism, man. I, I, I'm more worried about average than I am about uh, jihad and ISIS. Hmm. Okay. It's killing people every day. Every day people are being told, don't be obsessive. Don't be a control freak. Don't be an addict. You better find your addict. You better find your freaking junkie. Okay. You better mainstream. You better tie off your left arm, bro, <laughs> and poke on those veins and decide what, what you're going to be putting in that arm. Because if you don't decide... 
the world is going to dump on you for the next 80 years. Look, I know guys that are dead at 20 years old, and it's not official till they're 80. They sure. literally, literally just buy into the whole freaking deal, man. They never do more in their lives than become spectators. You know, so so I remember being 35 years old. I was sitting first class on a plane. A guy came and sat next to me. He was on the window seat, and and he says, "Oh my God, man! I'm so glad I got upgraded." And I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh, dude." I was on an American Airlines seat. I'm in seat 2B, 2B, or not to be. <laughs> and, 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 dude, the guy was so freaking thrilled that he was in 2A. And I thought to myself, oh, my God. I remember saying that, man. Yeah. What am I doing up here, man? What am I doing with this guy? That's his, his freaking, he's excited because he's stuck in a freaking plane for the next six hours in first class with some shitty food. That's when you decided to buy the jet, right? That's right, bro. That's when I decided, fuck, I'll never do this again. Yeah. Okay? It took me four years. Okay? My family deserves more than this, man. What am I doing stuck on this plane? Why am I going flying across country to talk to 200 people? I mean, this, this weekend I did a, did a webcast. There was over 6,000 people on this webcast. Oh, my goodness. I didn't leave my house, man. My plane's in the shop right now, so I, can't, I couldn't fly to the location. And, and I'm going to spend more to fix my plane this year to upgrade it than, 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 I, than I used to make in a year. Now, yeah. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that so I can get you average people to hate on me and come out of the closets. <laughs> because the people that aren't average would be like the people that want to be great. Dude, I want to spend so much money on a jet every year. I want to waste so much money. See, the, the winners, dude, guys like you, Ryan, are going to be like, that's what I want to do, bro. I want to go gut my plane, right? Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, sure, of course. And by course. the way, and by the way, in the same year, I want to give, you know, 10 times that much that I spent on the plane to a charity. Right. And... And in addition to doing that, I want to raise 10 times what I gave to charity. I want to raise from my new friends because I'm starting to reach new people because of the plane. No, that makes sense. You know, one one of the interesting things, Grant, as I listen to your show, it's fascinating to hear you not be able to say $80,000 a year. That's something that I get so 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 caught up on when you're like, yeah, eighty thousand uh, a month, or because you can't even say it, like it's not even going through your mind. It's really interesting to me. Yeah, dude, look, the biggest mistake I always tell people this: they, oh, hey, what's the biggest mistake you ever made? The the, the think was too small. Hmm. I mean, my whole life I've I've heard think big, think big, but the problem must be way bigger than we think because everybody knows they should think bigger, right? But right, it's right. so it's so hard to do, man. Like. My whole life, every mistake I have made has been based around this one thing. The think was too small. Even when I thought I was thinking big, I tell my wife all the time, the number one mistake I've made in my life was I have underestimated how, how much I could actually do. Start flying first class. Stay at the nicest hotels. So, so, so th- those are the ways. Look, if you're flying in coach, you're not going to meet anybody that can help you. You're, right. At best, the guy's a, ma- a junior level manager. That's not a decision maker. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Grant, we're winding down on time, man. I really appreciate the conversation. I want to ask you a couple of questions as we, uh, as we wind down and we finish things up. Number one, I didn't prepare you for this. I overlooked telling you, but I think you can handle it. Okay, Anybody can okay. handle it. You can. Okay. Uh, I just tell the I truth. Ask, I'll be all right. That's right. <laughs> the question I ask all of my guests is what does it mean to be a man? It means for me to fulfill my obligations to people, man. And that starts first with me, my potential. Doesn't mean, it doesn't mean I need to take care of my wife and my kids first. I need to take care of my potential. Because if I take care of my potential as a man, dude, I'm going to take care of my wife. I'm going to take care of my kids. I'm going to take care of my community. I'm going to take care of my employees. And I'm going to take care of my church. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful stuff. And I agree. I'm on board with that, man, for sure. So, Grant, how do we? I want you to tell us how we connect with you, how we learn more about you, how we get the book. But I also want you to talk about what we had talked about earlier with trying to get these books into high schools because yeah. I think this is real literacy. This isn't like textbook stuff. This is actually applicable, and this is valuable stuff that, frankly, isn't being taught in schools. Yeah, well, the first thing people can do is if you get the book, this is what I'm doing for everybody that, that orders the book. If you send me a receipt of this book, wherever you bought it, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, um, Books a Million, Target, 
grantcardone.com. Wherever you want to buy the book, I don't care where you buy it. Buy the hardback. Send me a receipt to obsessed at grantcardone.com. Obsessed at grantcardone.com. That's an email that'll come straight to me. And I'm going to make everybody that part of your show, everybody that buys the book, I'm going to give them a 13 week mastermind with me. Okay. Awesome. Now, the books, the most you're going to pay for the book is $29. I'm going to give you a 13 week live stream VIP exclusive coaching with me. Uh, that way, that way, this will be a book you actually finish because we're going to read it together. Right. But the other, the other way that people can help is if you know, if you got in your community, you know, my life, my life went bad in the 10th grade and, and, and partly went bad, man, because, because of schools, schools are boring. They're boring places. People hate school. And, and so I want to put this book in every school in America. So if you got a school, maybe you got three or four or five high schools in your market, in your city, uh, if you want to help me with this, this weekend we got over 6,000 schools with this book in it. A 10th grader will read a book with a, kid, with, with a guy sitting on the engine of his plane. <laughs> That's right. And, and so this is going to be a, a book that really gives kids permission. You know, this whole ADD, ADHD, COPD, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, I've been labeled all that stuff. Kids are being mislabeled right now because they got big dreams. And I want to give them permission. If, you, if your audience can help me get this book, one book, two books, five books, seven books, 20 books, uh, write me at obsessed at grantcardone.com or do we create a website? I think it's grantcardone.com, obsessed kids. Grantcardone.com, obsessed kids, forward slash obsessed kids. All right, cool. <clears throat> yeah, perfect, Grant. What we'll do is we'll make sure we link everything up. So we'll put the email address in there. We'll put the website up. That way, guys that are interested in helping out, interested in getting the book, they know exactly where to go and get all this stuff. Dude, you're the man, bro. I appreciate everything you're doing for so many men, all right? Well, Grant, I appreciate you. I got to tell you, man, I, uh, your books and your information and the things that you've taught me have really actually caused me to level up. And part of the reason that I started the journey that I'm on right now, because I'm thinking bigger than I ever have before. And I know I'm having a bigger impact than I ever have before. And we're just getting started. So thank you, brother. Grant, appreciate you. Okay.